I met my realtor wife when she gave me the tour of my future home. It's a beautiful, unique mansion. I'm an architect, but the design of my house still amazes me as much as it did the first time I saw it. It's older, but you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at it. It's futuristic and stands out on a giant hill all by itself. At the time, my future wife looked just as dazzling as the house. I asked her out that very night and took her to the nicest place in the city. On the way, we saw a billboard with her face on it. She was the star realtor of Memphis Area Realty, and she made it her personal goal to live with me in the house on the hill. As an architect, I got to travel all over the U.S. to share my ideas and designs with upper-class business-driven people. I was never gone for more than three days. A lot of my work could be done remotely, but traveling was inevitable sometimes. So, our story really begins when my wife volunteered to watch her aunt's house for seven days. I had to leave for a trip before this, so we were apart for ten days. It was the longest we ever went without seeing each other. Before she got to her aunt's house, she texted me often and called each evening to talk and say goodnight. On the first day she spent there, she was pretty quiet. She finally sent me a selfie with a campfire in the background and another man. There was also a teenager I didn't recognize. I asked who they were, and she texted me to explain that they lived on the same property as her aunt, just about 300 yards away, in a different house. They knew her aunt, but not enough for her aunt to have them watch her house. My wife told me the man in the picture had a wife, but she went to bed early. I believed her, and just asked her to be careful. I told her I didn't want anyone in her aunt's house with her, for safety's sake. She agreed with me. The next two days, she spoke to me less, even though she knew I was back home by myself. She said it was because she was busy taking care of her aunt's chickens. The next three days, she only called me for about an hour on each day. The rest of the time, she said she had a few properties to show that were close to her aunt's house. She showed me some of her aunt's chickens, but video calling just made me wish I was there with her. Her aunt lived two and a half hours from us, and I had to meet with a few clients in the opposite direction. On the eighth day, she only texted me goodnight and told me she got sucked into a book all day as an excuse for not speaking to me. On the ninth night, she sent me a selfie of her in bed. I honestly wondered if the man next door was laying beside her just out of sight. On the tenth night, she video called me around nine. She looked sad and sounded unsure of everything. It was extremely different compared to how my wife normally acted. Her excuse was that she fell off the porch steps and landed face first in the dirt. I was about to sympathize with her, but she quickly and loudly said she'd be home tomorrow and hung up. I tried calling her back over and over, but she didn't answer. I was so mad that I didn't try to call her the next day, even though I was worried and wanted to know if she was near home. When she walked in, I was relieved and swooped in for a hug. She was stiff and hesitant to let me caress her. I immediately asked her what was going on and what happened, but she played dumb and said there was nothing to report. I asked if she was as relieved to see me as I was to see her, and she only weakly said yes. We had sex, but it was just wrong. Before I could quiz her more, her aunt called my phone. It was odd that she wouldn't contact my wife directly, so I said it was someone from work and left the room to answer it. She said she came home to find AP with my wife in her home. She didn't know AP well at all, even though he was her neighbor, so it was very unusual to find him there without her permission. They looked spooked when she walked in, so she decided to review her driveway camera footage. I held my breath as she told me that AP went to her house several times to see my wife. She couldn't see what they did in her house, but whenever they went outside, the audio was recorded. My wife trash-talked me to AP and said he was better company. I asked her if AP was married, and she said no, so my wife lied from day two. Her aunt told me that on the last two nights she stayed there, AP came over around 10 p.m. and didn't leave the house until the next morning. I felt like my world was ending. I remembered the picture she sent me and knew for certain that AP was in the house at that time. She apologized and said she never thought my wife was capable of cheating or lying like this. My wife came into the room and asked me what was going on. I lost it. I started screaming what her aunt just told me, and she started sweating. She said whatever AP told her wasn't true, but I told her that cameras don't lie. 
She opened her mouth to say something, but nothing came out, and I demanded to know why. I was so mad, I was shaking. She was holding her phone for some reason, so I grabbed it and snapped it in half. She screamed at me for that and called me a spaz, which made me lose it even more. I reminded her that I was freaking out because I just found out she spent nights with another man behind my back. I asked if they had sex, and she just told me I wouldn't want to know. I told her to get out of my house. It was then that her eyes bugged out of her head. It was like she didn't realize I was going to break up with her for this. She suddenly pleaded with me, saying she didn't mean anything by it and just wanted someone to hang out with while she was there. I was only more infuriated and told her she could have invited me over. If she was that lonely, she didn't have to cheat on me. I could have driven the distance if it meant saving our marriage. She stammered and couldn't think of anything that would help excuse her from this poor decision and life-changing mistake. I told her once again to get out of my house. I wouldn't forgive this level of blatant betrayal. Without her phone, she walked to a gas station in tears to call her mom. She came to pick her up and get her stuff, but my soon-to-be ex refused to tell her what was going on. So, I told her all about my wife's mistake. She begged me not to tell her mother, but I told her I was going to tell anyone and everyone what she did to me. Once she was at her mom's, I connected with my closest friends for support. In a short while, I became known as the city's newest and most desirable bachelor. She became known as the realtor that cheated on her respectable husband. Her billboard was graffitied, and she was subsequently fired from Memphis area realty. OP, I can't believe your wife didn't respect you enough to let AP remain a stranger. She didn't have to interact with him at all, but she chose to, and even lied about him being married. It was like she planned to do this, by giving a lie so early into the trip. I am relieved that her aunt told you what she found out, because it didn't seem like your wife had any intention of spilling the beans. Even though it was obvious that her behavior changed and something was wrong, just be grateful you didn't spend even more time with this woman. Karma took away the image she worked so hard to create. Since cheating on you, she's basically starting back from square one in life. I wish you the best and thank you for sharing this story. I'm sure you'll have no trouble at all continuing on your path to success and happiness. Now let's get into our second story for today. Twelve years ago, I married my wife. She had her nursing degree and always seemed like an extremely kind and respectable woman. I was proud to go around bragging that I was married to the best woman in town. Since my parents were legends in the area, I felt almost like a celebrity. Success was easy for me since my father trained me in his craftsmanship. My wife and I often went to gatherings and parties, all dressed up and classy. I thought she deserved it, but I was wrong. I didn't know that seven years after we were married, she met someone that would change our life forever. Shortly after we were married, she left the chaotic and unpredictable hospital employment to work a much more comfortable and sophisticated job. Two elderly and wealthy people my father knew were looking for a trusted nurse to share their mansion with them for one week at a time, two weeks in a month. Although it was a small adjustment for us to live apart like this, I was extremely busy working on client projects, so this schedule suited us just fine. This happened as I just told you for the next 10 years. But in actuality, she stopped working this job completely after 5 years. One night, I was sitting at the dining room table with my wife of 12 years, eating dinner. Earlier in the day, she helped me mark down which expenses she put her paycheck towards that week. I was feeling extremely grateful, happy, and pleased. I'm sure she was too, but maybe a part of that was because she was able to keep her affair from me for so many years. Suddenly, my phone rang. I excused myself to take the call, like I always did if it was business related. In the other room, I heard my father's worried voice. He asked me if I knew that my wife wasn't working for his elderly friends anymore. I said she still was, so he explained that he was having tea with them when they mentioned that she quit working for them four years ago. The room spun, and I felt my body become weightless. I just asked my dad where my wife was getting money from. He didn't know the answer to that, and he was worried for me. In a daze, I turned to look into the dining room at my wife. She was chewing, but smiled a close-lipped smile at me. When my face didn't turn from extremely disturbed, she swallowed hard and asked me what was going on. I asked her where she'd been getting her money from all these years. Her fork dropped, 
and she slowly rose to her feet. She looked down, then back at me, and said she knew this day would come. She told me she loved us both, so whatever needed to happen was fine, she made peace with it. I just asked who she loved, and she said me and another man's name I didn't know. She met AP at one of the social gatherings we went to. He was a truck driver who was only home for two weeks out of the month. After their relationship evolved over text, phone calls, and several dates I knew nothing about, he asked her to move in with him. Somehow he didn't know she was married to me. She quit her job and was there for him whenever he got home from driving. He didn't notice her using his money to pay our household bills because he made and spent money without much thought. I was speechless. She added that she would just make up stories about the old people whenever I asked. A scream came out of my body. I felt like I was shapeshifting into an animal. Every part of me hurt, and no matter what thought I had, it tormented me. I told her to get out, repeatedly. I was saying more than that, but I can't remember exactly what I said because my memory becomes a blur. She packed willingly and quickly, but she had the nerve to wish I wouldn't take it so hard. I was freaking out, completely devastated. I grabbed a paper bag and started breathing into it just so I wouldn't pass out. This was our entire life. I thought she was my diamond, something to be proud of, something strong and beautiful that I'd never lose. All the while, my father was on the phone. Hearing my despair, he called some of my friends and they all agreed to meet at my house. When they got there, I literally fell into their arms, letting each of them hold me for several seconds. I needed their strength. My soon-to-be ex loaded her car alone, silently, until she drove away. I couldn't believe she was going so easily. My father, friends, and I all started talking about what to do next. I decided with their support that we needed to figure out who AP was and tell him that she was living this double life. She certainly didn't deserve to have a backup home and spouse she could run to. We found him, after some investigating. My wife's secret online account that led us to him was under her middle and maiden name. We messaged him, but he and I ended up speaking directly over the phone so I could answer all his questions. When he realized I knew everything about his girlfriend and had pictures of us living our lives together, he broke down. She broke two hearts. He swore he wouldn't allow her to have anything of his ever again. That same day, my wife called me sobbing. She asked me why I had to ruin her life. I couldn't believe her selfishness and inability to accept her wrongdoing. She got away with having two lovers for so long, I guess it was twice as heartbreaking to lose both at once. I told her she was the one that ruined our lives, and she was a liar that didn't deserve to be happy. That was the last time I ever spoke to her, even though she continuously tried contacting me. She updated me continuously. At first, she tried getting back her old job, but after the couple found out she lied and cheated, they called her untrustworthy. She resorted to a nursing job at the hospital again and rented a small, pathetic apartment. She was forced to work full-time as a nurse just to make ends meet, which she said was nearly impossible after mooching off two men for so long. With the new, demanding schedule, she hasn't had time to date anyone and has asked me more than once to take her for old time's sake. I always ignore her. She already stole too much of my time. OP, I can't believe your wife cheated on you for so long. The fact that she was capable of lying and living a double life like that makes her an extremely difficult person to trust. Even if she changed her ways, she'd have a hard time getting anyone to trust her if they knew her history. Which means she'll probably lie and avoid telling anyone what she's done. This was not your fault. No matter who her husband was, she most likely would have done the same thing. Since her schedule was the same as his, she saw the opportunity to be dishonest. I am relieved that your father discovered the truth and helped you, along with friends, to get through the devastating news. You have a second chance at true love. This isn't the end, but just the beginning. You already know what it takes to have a successful, long-lasting relationship on your part. Just keep your faith and refuse to give up in finding an honorable spouse. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.